Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at Linux running on a modded PS4. This is actually a PS4 Pro. And the distro we're going to be taking a look at today is known as SteamOS 3.0 for the PS4. This is by NASKey, and it's not official SteamOS 3.0, but there's a lot of awesome stuff built in here, like the Steam Deck UI, game scope, and all kinds of stuff to get up and running with Linux on your PS4. So I've actually had this PS4 Pro for a while, but I let a buddy borrow it and they had it for about a year and a half. They did use it a lot, and uh, recently I asked to get it back. I know it's been a long time coming, but I really wanted to get Linux installed on this thing. I didn't want to have to buy a new one. And uh, I was actually surprised to see that it never went online. So it was still on like 7.5 when I got it back. And I could have used an earlier version of this jailbreak. But what I did was just go ahead and update to 9.0. Because uh, a lot of people are saying that it's more stable than any of the other ones. And it's really easy to get this up and running. And when it comes to Linux on the PS4, there's a lot of different distros you can run. I'm going to be running this from an external SSD. This is just a 512 gigabyte SSD running over USB 3.0. You can use a USB drive if you want to, but I find that this is going to be a lot faster. So in order to get Linux booted on the PS4, we still have to run the Gold Hen exploit, and this is going to allow us to jailbreak the system. You have to do this every time you reboot, and it can be a bit cumbersome, but it's pretty easy with the auto exploit. I've got it automatically going over to a trusted host. It's going to tell me I need to plug in my USB drive. It's going to give me an error. I'll press OK. And now we're jailbroken. So we'll go ahead and unplug this, press OK, and we can actually run payloads directly from this host online, or you can send them over from a PC. I'm going to be using the Chameleon host here because they do have the Linux payloads, and I've already got it set up on this drive. So all I really need to do is launch one of these Linux payloads, and this will kind of dedicate VRAM and RAM to the Linux system itself. When you're installing, you definitely only want to choose one gig, but after the install and I'm ready to use the system, I usually choose three gigs of VRAM. Now, if you're interested in getting something like this set up, I would highly recommend checking out Modded Warfare's YouTube channel. I'll leave a link in the description, but if you want to know how to mod your PS4, install emulators, install Linux, and basically do anything with a modded PS4, he's got a tutorial over on that channel. I highly recommend checking it out if you want to get into modding your PS4. So I've just launched the payload. Everything should be good to go. And now it's reading that kernel from the drive. Uh, my screen does go black for about 15 seconds, but as long as this drive starts to flash, I know it's going to be working, and it should pop right back up. Got a little LED indicator on this SSD here. And uh, yeah, hopefully it's working. Can be a bit temperamental. There we go. And now it's going to start booting into Linux for me. And it's a full desktop operating system. It's actually based on Arch. Basically, it's Manjaro with Steam Deck UI and Steam and GameScope installed on top of that. And I have run into a few issues with GameScope, but, uh, you know, this is really early. And hopefully in the future, we'll get a more stable build. But there are a few things that I can show you work in here. Like Wii and GameCube emulation, we've got a full browser built in, and I'm going to test a few Steam games. I might just go with some native Linux games right now, because like I mentioned, I have been having some issues with GameScope in this build, but I figured it was worth making a quick video. And to tell you the truth, the read and write speeds aren't that bad with the setup I have here. It's a cheaper 512 gigabyte SSD with a USB 3.0 adapter. So I'm going to get in a bit closer so we can see the operating system a little better. So like I mentioned, this is based on Manjaro, and it's using the XFCE desktop. It's just a little lightweight, and uh, I mean, everything does work pretty well here. Let me go ahead and launch Terminal. We'll run NeoFetch. There's not much information that really can distinguish the CPU we're using here, but you can see that we are on the PS4 right now, running from that USB drive. And overall, it's actually been a pretty snappy experience, and I really think it comes down to using that SSD instead of a USB drive or a mechanical drive. I could definitely see loading times be increased by using a much slower drive. And this distro here can be updated from Terminal, or you can go to the Update software and update it there. Everything's been working so far. I've got Bluetooth, I've got Wi-Fi, Ethernet, sound. Obviously, we've got HDMI working, all the USB ports. Uh, I've got this browser here. This is uh, Firefox. You can go ahead and watch a YouTube video. It does 1080p playback pretty decently. But one of the main reasons I opted to use this distro instead of something else was that Steam Deck UI. 
Now you could always run regular old Steam on here if you want to, and I'm not sure why this isn't going full screen automatically. Like I mentioned, it's still a bit early, but it does work. You can use a keyboard, you can use the PS4 controller connected over USB or connected over Bluetooth. I haven't tested any other controllers right now over Bluetooth, but I don't see why they wouldn't work. I mean, we've got Linux here. If I head to the settings, we can go to system. You can see that we're on the PS4 here with that Manjaro operating system. So initially going into this, I thought it was real Steam Deck OS 3.0, but it's kind of just a modded version of Manjaro with uh, GameScope and the Steam Deck UI. But as it sits right now, for being so early, it's actually working pretty decently. Let's go ahead and start up Left 4 Dead 2. And from here, we can just go ahead and play. It's pretty cool to see these games up and running on PS4 hardware, but when it comes down to it, I wouldn't sell my main Linux PC and buy a PS4 just to install Linux on it, because there's still a lot of issues. But it is really fun to mess around with. Okay, so jumping right into a little bit of gameplay here. I didn't change any of the settings. I did take a look. It's at very high, and I'm sure we could get this to run a little better. We're at 1080p, very high settings, and you can definitely see some stutters with this one. But I'd say taking it down to 900p medium settings would alleviate all of this. And of course, I wanted to test out a little bit of Half-Life 2. Again, very high settings, 1080p. Got some stutters every once in a while, so taking those settings down would help out. And if there's interest in this, I will make a few more videos, you know, showing you some settings that you can use with these games and testing a lot more. But I gotta say, one of the main reasons I would run Linux on the PS4 in the first place is for emulation. Now, with the stock firmware, or the 9.0 firmware with the jailbreak, we can install standalone emulators, RetroArch, there's a lot of stuff we can do directly from the PSN menu. But with a standalone Linux distro, there's just a lot more flexibility. Right now, we're gonna be testing out the Dolphin emulator here. We'll test a GameCube game and a Wii game. I went with my go-to test. This is Automotalista. It's a harder one to emulate, and we'll see what it does. Just moved in a bit closer, so you can see that FPS up in the top right-hand corner. I went up to 720p with this, and there's a chance we could go to 1080. I don't see it dipping much at all, and this is a harder one to emulate. I, I tried to install Mango HUD. It's just kind of a performance monitor that'll overlay over basically any game in a regular Linux distro but it will not launch with this one for some reason. I think what I need to do with this is just kind of get a base Manjaro image and set it up the way I like. You could also install a Ubuntu image if you want to. I recently saw Pop! OS, which looked really cool running on the PS4, but I personally really like Arch. So yeah, GameCube games work great, and Wii games. We're using the same Dolphin emulator here. FPS in the top right hand corner, 720p, running at 60. The PS4 does have a PSP and PlayStation 1 emulator built in, but I've seen a lot of people complaining about it. I'm not sure how good it is. So I just went ahead and compiled PPSSPP for this distro, and performance is really great. So we'll go ahead and move over there now. Alright, so here we have Midnight Club 3 Dub Edition. It's a harder one to emulate. OpenGL back in. 4X resolution. I didn't even have to turn on any of these hacks. FPS is up in the top right hand corner and it runs at full speed. So yeah, I mean when it comes to the easier to emulate stuff, you can even go a bit higher with the resolution. But we're working with a 1080p monitor right now and 4x is perfect. So yeah, it's pretty awesome to see Linux running on the PS4. Now this isn't something I would replace my everyday desktop with because I did run into some issues. I actually had a couple crashes here and there. And once Linux crashes, you do have to kind of hard reboot the PS4, re-jailbreak it, boot back in. It can take up some time. But the time I've spent with Linux booted up on this unit has been pretty pleasant. I actually haven't tested video playback from YouTube yet, so I figured I'd do that now. Go over to Big Buck Bunny. And I don't think we're going to handle 4K, but 1080p might work pretty decently. Go full screen with it. 
looking pretty good. You know, I've tested this a lot. I can tell it's definitely dropping frames at 1080p. So 720, you know, for super smooth playback. This ain't too bad. But there's still a lot I'd like to do with Linux on the PS4. So if you're interested in seeing more videos like this, let me know in the comments below. And it would be really cool if you could hit that subscribe button and maybe turn notifications on. If you're interested in getting Linux up and running on your PS4, I will leave a link in the description to Modded Warfare's YouTube channel. Definitely check it out. It's really the first place to start when jailbreaking your PS4. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. And like always, thanks for watching.